tonight's show. We are here in the Sky Lounge. I'm interviewing artists from East Harlem. His name is Lex Lava. We're going to talk everything that he's been up to. He has his new project out. He has his new single out. We're going to get to all of that. Bodega Dreams 3. So super excited to talk about that. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Chilling, I'm chilling. I see you bobbing over there to the joint. Always got to start it up so of course. Listen, because we don't think hey, it. Hey. Look at that. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Let this rock out real quick. Of course, this is Lifestyle off of Bodega Dreams 3. Bodega Dreams 3, in fact. Period. Really excited to have you here. Well, since you're here, thank you for having me. It's been it's been a minute, but welcome back to Next Level Podcast. Shout out to Sky Level Media. I'm your host Ebony Francis, and of course, we are here to interview the dopest celebrities and give the most exclusive interviews with your favorite celebrities. And we're excited to have New York rapper East Harlem in the building. Shout out to Harlem. Lex Lava with us today, and here to talk about Bodega Dreams 3, talk yes. about lifestyle and everything that you've been up to, so. Let's do it. How have you been? How's it going? I'm, I'm chilling, just maintaining, you know, uh, New York been getting smashed with the weather crazy, with the snowstorms back to back, so uh, just trying to, you know, work around that and all that, but other than that, I'm, I'm Gucci, I'm chilling right now. What's up with you? Uh, Everything's good, you know, blessed, happy to be here. You got to come to Atlanta. It was, y'all, it was like 70 degrees today. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky y'all. Lucky Sun y'all. <laughs> Lucky it y'all. Amazing. amazing. Yeah, but yes, y'all. Too good lately. It's been kind of, it's been, it's been like back to back, back to back, snow, snow. Oh Literally. It's crazy. Well, I like, pray that I Off and then the snow come back, so. <laughs> It's crazy right now. Dress well. We're going to get into a little icebreaker game before we start. And everybody that's coming in, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to the Next Level Podcast. I'm your host, Ebony Francis, and we got Lex Bravo in the building right now. So this icebreaker we're going to play is going to be called Wordplay. And we're taking a look at your recent project, of course, Well, Bodega Dreams 3, out everywhere. Go stream that right now. Make sure you go do what you got to do. Everywhere. And we're going to play a game based off of your songs. Okay. All right. So the first one is going to be playing off the title, Break Bread. What is your favorite meal to eat with family? Uh, damn. Uh, if I got to say, uh, you know, a typical Spanish meal, it got to be like white rice, black beans, and like chicharron de pollo. That's like boneless wing, but boneless chicken. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Like a, that's like a, a a common Spanish dish that you know me and my family eat. Yes, um, listen, my best friend is Puerto Rican, so I, her mom used to be. No, so, you know it. So you know what it's hitting for. <laughs> you know? Okay, so based off of the title "Glamour Life," we want to know: Do you like your girl glam up, or do you like your girl dressed down? Um. I put it to you like this. I rather appreciate them prior to them being glammed up so I know what I'm getting myself into. And then, you know, when they, if they want to get themselves glammed up later on, you know, it, it'll be more for me to appreciate. That's how I look at it. You know what I mean? Yes. Listen, ladies, he likes the, the sweatpants, hair tied, chilling vibes. And yeah, then when you that. get glammed up. Like, I, I mean, it's cool to give, you know, everybody want to have a good first impression or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be, and, I, and I'm cool with that, you know what I mean? But you don't got to be all makeup, crazy. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a man of simple taste, so I don't really care for none of that shit. All right, y'all heard it here first. Okay, so our next one is our last one. Playing off the title, Lifestyle, which is a single. Everybody can right. it. It's available yeah. on all platforms right now. Right. And five years from now, what type of lifestyle do you see yourself living? I'd say very uh, a very successful businessman, not only within music, but you know, in other endeavors that I have planned out that I want to accomplish, you know, over the years, you know, to come. I mean, just I, I'm I'm a type of person. I like to have my hands in a lot of different things. So, like I said, just I, I definitely I'm I know I'm gonna be successful in a lot of different areas, aside from music alone. Dope, dope. Yeah. Well, that was a dope icebreaker. We're going to get into these questions. Everybody that's coming in, 
Welcome to the Next Level Podcast. I'm your host, Ebony Francis. We got Lex Lava on here. About to go down. First one, okay, so you're from East Harlem, of course. Right. And we know there's some heavy hitters out of Harlem. There's some heavy hitters out of New York, period. So who are your biggest influences out of New York? Um, I mean, I, I can give you old and new. If I got to go old, I can uh -huh. give you like um, Nas, Pun, uh, shit, I could give you Rakim. I could give you, uh, damn, it's it's a lot of people. I mean, I could go, I could go to, you know, the whole routes and there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different people that influenced me, I guess you could say, or impacted me musically, um, you know, as far as like, you know, in that era, but in the, even in the new era, you got like, um, shit, uh, you got like French Montana out here, he's been doing his thing for years, you got, so you got Cardi B, you got um, you got a lot of different people been making they, you know, been making New York look look proud. You know, welcome home, for, uh, Bobby Bobby Schmurter. He just came home. I know he gonna do his thing. You know what I'm saying? The whole GS9. I know they 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 ready to go crazy. So you know, it's it's there's there's such a diverse uh, culture of music in New York right now, especially now. Like it's crazy. It's a lot of different you know things going on. So you know. I mean, I, I'm I'm impacted by life itself. So whatever's going on around me, you know, if it's dope, I know it's gonna influence me to do something. You know, might you know take a little bits and pieces and make it my own. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Well, that's dope. That's dope. If you. Hmm, okay, so here's here's my, here's my next one. Of course, everybody knows like Bodega. If you if you live in New York, if you know you know what is Bodega. Mm -hmm. Bodega is a corner store. But yeah. for you, was it like, was it self-explanatory? Was it just a simply put, or do you have a story behind why you named it Bodega Dreams? Well, that title comes from a from a book that I read when I was in high school, Bodega Dreams. There's actually a book, yeah, and it's based the 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 book is based in Harlem, in Spanish Harlem, where I'm from. Ironically, so um, well, I I think I was in maybe ninth grade or something like that. And when I read it, I, I resonated with it so much that when I started making music around like 17, 18, like really like taking it serious, my first project was Bodega Dreams. Wow. And it's crazy over time, you know, man, I, I've, been, I've experienced so much. I actually got to like meet the author just recently. I want to say like about a year ago, he did like a book signing. And uh, it's like a little boutique in, in, in the Bronx. Um, and I went and I got to meet him and I, and I showed him. I was like, yo, dude, like your book influenced me to like, you know, create music from that. And I named my project Bodega Dreams. And I, and I showed him my whole catalog and he was like blown away. He was like, wow. Like, you know, I didn't think it, it, it um, impacted, you know, people that much to that point. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, Bodega Dreams, it, it, it not only stems from the book itself and, and, you know, how it resonated with me, but also, you know, growing up in Spanish Harlem, like you said, there's bodegas on every corner, like every corner there's a bodega, you know, and, you know, growing up with my peers and, you know, people that I grew up with around me in the neighborhood, you know, a lot of things go on in those bodegas, in front of them, inside of them, around them, in the neighborhood. There's just a lot that kind of just influenced me. So it's like, it, it. I guess I just used the terminology and just created something dope out of it. And then, like I said, it's just, it just, that book alone resonated with me. So it just, it just, fit. it just went. So I was just like, yeah, I'm running with that. And people know me for that. You know what I mean? Like the whole Bodega Dreams, um, you know, uh, trilogy that I got. And I guess, you know, it, it's for me, it's like I said, it just comes down to it being a cultural thing too. You know what I'm saying? So. It's it's a beautiful thing, man. I, I I love the you know the creativity behind it and and how it how it kind of drove me, you know, into wanting to to make two and three and just keep going with it. You know what I mean? I love it. I love the full circle of it all. That's that's yeah, it's crazy. That's dope. Yeah. It. So, Thank so you. tell me, you are international. I'm hearing you got international vibes going on, and you've been working with like a lot of international artists. How has that been? Or like do you have any any of your favorite international artists that you've worked with thus far? Um, I haven't worked with uh that many. I mean, as far as like doing records with international <laughs> artists, I got like maybe one or two, but you know, I, I definitely have a very big fan base overseas. Yeah. 
Japan. I got a big uh, fan base out in Japan, um, South Africa, London, a lot of different places, right? Just to name a few. Um, yeah. But I, I got to say that there's one place in particular that's been showing me love since day one. It got to be Japan. Like, Japan is just... Like, they show love like no other, I'll be honest. Like, I've been getting love from them since day one. I'm talking about my first mixtape, my first music. Like, I don't, you know, the internet is a powerful thing, man. Like, for that, for my music to reach that far, you know what I mean? It's just, it's unbelievable. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I'd have to go with Japan and how they, uh, they just constantly showing me love, man. Constantly. Even the DJs out there, they always spinning my music. Yeah. Hell yeah, they be spinning my music like crazy out there. That I got to go out there. I haven't been, man. I got to get out there ASAP. Or... Listen, you already know when you go, it's going to be all love. That would be dope. You should do a feature with a... You should do, like, a Japan... Nah, I want to. I mean, that's in the works, because, like I said, I know a lot of, like, DJs out there, and, and a lot of, like, Japanese artists follow me, too, like, that's rappers. True. So it's, it's, it's definitely going to happen. It's inevitable. You know, I just got to get out there. So, you know, I'm yeah. just... I once this whole COVID shit is, is over with, I'm out there, like, you know what I mean? So... I already know. So... I saw your bio or I saw your page. So I'm pretty sure I know New York Rican means New York Puerto Rican, right? Yeah, for for okay. the for the most part, yeah. Yeah, for the for the most part. So okay, so how was it so coming into the game as a Puerto Rican rapper and you have all of these you have a line of legend legendary Puerto Rican rappers or just Hispanic rappers, period, and artists. How do you feel being in the midst of that, being in the midst of being a uh, New York Puerto Rican artist, rapper at this time, like just going hard, going heavy? How do you how do you plan on, you know, holding that on your, holding that to a high standard? It's crazy because I was just having this conversation about maybe a week ago, with one of my homies. Okay. And, and it's tough being a Spanish artist, you know what I mean? Like a Spanish English rapper. You know what I mean? It's it's definitely tough. You don't see too many of them out there, like a Spanish English rapper. You gonna see Spanish rappers that's they rap in Spanish. You know, not yeah. to say that I can't, but it, I got my work cut out for me in a sense where you know I feel like even just my Spanish influence that I add to you know what I put you know into my music, you know sometimes it resonates with people, sometimes it doesn't. I might be saying some stuff in Spanish that it might go over people's heads and they're like, oh, okay. You know, it, it's, you know, just to kind of get to, to the point though, it's, it's definitely tough, but I feel like, you know, the, the, just the, the swag is undeniable. The vibe yeah. is undeniable. Sometimes it's like, it, it don't even matter about the, you know, the, the cultural, the, the cultural aspect of it. I think it's more so, just the vibe and the connection between you and your and your um your audience you know what i mean because the fact that i got people in a whole nother country that don't even speak english vibing with my music it you know it goes to show you you know what i'm saying it doesn't stop there so i mean you know i, I guess it's just like i said i gotta work twice as harder than than the you know i guess than the normal artist i guess you could say i got because if you want to be realistic you know you know, the game is predominantly African-American rappers, right? You know, you got some white cats in there that's been doing their thing, but you very seldomly see a Spanish-English rapper. You know what I'm saying? So, it, like I said, it, it's it's a little more tough for us in a sense. I mean, because think about it, the last the last artist that was really that big on, on a, I'm talking about on a pop, you know, level was probably Big Pun. And he was taken from us way too soon. And then, you know, you got Fat Joe and stuff like that. He's he's remarkable, you know what I mean? He's he's He paved the way just like Pundit, but that's it. I mean, I can't name somebody who's on their level that's them, that, right. that, that, that was rapping the way they were rapping and still being Latino at the same time and still getting the recognition. So, you know, I, like I said, I just feel like, you know, it's going to come, though. You know, I feel like the, there's, like, a big Latin boom going on right now. A lot of, like, Spanish artists are getting, like, you know, their flowers and people are, like, you know, recognizing them for their, their work. And, you know, I'm just trying to, you know, ride that wave and see what I get out of it. I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. And I know you're definitely going to pave the way you already are. So big ups to you in advance because I already can see it. Thank this you. New that means single a lot. hair lifestyle is amazing. 
Yeah, and this okay. single lifestyle is amazing. My favorite line is my line. My line be no face, no case. So that's like my, <laughs> that's like my, my thing. So I said, okay, okay, <laughs> I like it. And plus, I really like the visuals. The the person that whoever did your video or your your videographer did an amazing job. The art was dope. You know, the transitions were really dope. You coming out of the corner store and then walking in and then something else pops on. So big ups to you and your team for that. You know what's so crazy? You know, nine days is is such a uh you know the, the, the attention the ah, excuse me the attention span is so like like very fast paced that you know you mm -hmm. got guessing it on their toes constantly you know what yeah. I'm saying? I think you know with this video we had to give them that like real fast paced energy you know like the transitions of the cuts and that, the way we edit everything it had to be that way and it still came out dope like where you know I was still able to be me and you know the people were able to at least you know resonate with what I was doing. You know what I'm saying within the video, and still be like, "Yo, that shit was dope." Aside from the edit, like just just the, I guess um, the imagery, and the way I was you know portraying myself in the video. So you know, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Of course, and everybody out there, of course, Sky Level Media, Next Level Podcast. We are now in the skylines with Lex Lavo. He's talking to us about. Bodega James 3, Lifestyle's out right now, streaming on all platforms. Make sure y'all go get that. So, yeah. I'm on my last question. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for coming into the Sky Lounge. And I'll just end it off with, you know, asking what's up next. Of course, how can we keep in touch with you? Do you have any upcoming plans right now? I know we're in quarantine, but do you have anything that we can just, you know, vibe out, rock out? Of course, we're going to go download and stream. Yes, yeah, please, you take please do. Um, but yeah, like you said, Bodega Dreams is definitely out now everywhere. Um, the single lifestyle is out now and the visual. Um, but you, what you could expect is just, you know, more visuals, more content, you know, um, just being, just being more consistent this year. You know what I mean? It, I took a little time off a little while back and now I'm just trying to like, you know, go full speed ahead and just, you know, do my thing. So I guess, you know, just to just to keep it short and sweet, that's what you could expect. More content, more visuals, and just, you know, just me being on on, on the ball with it because I, I just feel like, like you were saying before, when it came to, like, you know, so to speak, putting shit on my shoulders and really, like, riding out with it, like, I feel like it's, like, something I got to do at this point. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like I have to do it. It ain't even because I want to do it or because I only have, a, like, I have a passion for it because, of course, I love doing what I do, but now it's, like, almost like a birthright. Like, I yes. feel like I have to do this. You know what I'm saying? It's something that's in me that that, that yeah. drives me, like a driving force, so to speak. So, yeah, um, if y'all want to, anybody tuned in right now, want to stay in touch, just follow me on, on IG, all the social media platforms, IG, Twitter. If you want to check out any of my my music or anything, you you get uh, it's on it's everywhere, literally everywhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely open. You know, I'm open minded. I'm I'm very receptive to people letting me know how they feel about my art. So, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Well, that was that. We got Bonnie in here today. She said it's the New York accent for me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, y'all, thank you so much for joining us. This is Next Level Podcast, Sky Level Media. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to Lex Lavo. Make sure y'all go follow him. Make sure y'all go stream his music. Make sure y'all show love. And of course, we will see y'all next time. This is Next Level Podcast. And I always like to go out with the song. So we got to vibe out to this real quick. But thank you so much. I can't wait to see you driving out here. In the, yes, in the thank you. Stay safe. You come to Atlanta, link up. We already know the weather is. Link up. No, definitely. The weather is calling. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. All right, be safe. It was nice talking to you. Thank you. Peace. Appreciate you. Peace.